What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. In this video, I review Strategic Mind Spectre of Communism. One of my favorite genres of gaming is turn based strategy titles. As a history buff, I'm always excited to play games that stick close to historical events. So when I was given a review copy of Strategic Mind Spectre of Communism, I was definitely ready to jump in. Most strategy games follow major aspects of war and call for the players to build strategies around real life scenarios to defeat their opponents. Each expansion focuses on a different aspect of war and perspective. Spectre of Communism takes you through World War II from the Russian point of view. Starting Games has a deep passion about the history surrounding this war and they keep the game as close as possible to history while also throwing in some various perspectives to keep things fresh for the gamer. If you're a history buff like me then you'll recognize many of the key characters they mention throughout the game and you can appreciate the passion from the devs. The campaign includes 20 missions that span the events from 1939 through 1945, with roughly 80 hours of gameplay depending on your difficulty level. This game was released previously on the PC back in 2020, so this review will focus on the PlayStation port of the game. In my review, I give the good, the bad, and my final verdict. Let's start off with the good. One of the strongest aspects of this title is the gameplay. The Strategic Mind franchise usually performs pretty well as a turn-based strategy game, and the same can be said here. Darnie Games did a good job at prioritizing the historical-based vehicles, weapons, and strategies mirroring that of what was like during World War II. Each unit has its own benefits and drawbacks, and it's up to the player to determine which unit they will use to maximize the situation. Before choosing your next move, you need to be aware of what would be best for the current situation, and this game does give you a wide array of options when progressing through different missions. Whether using the Soviet tanks to clear pathways for your ground forces, or bombers to devastate infantry, the various moves and strategies are essentially endless, making the experience fun. What makes the gameplay even better is the affirmation briefings, which give you the option to prepare for the next operation. At these pit stops, you have the ability to use command points to upgrade your units, strengthen current movesets, or learning new ones. This only enhances the gameplay, which opens up the replayability of the title. As I mentioned earlier, you can sense the passion behind Sterny Games when connecting the missions to actual historical events. Aspects of each mission you complete are mirrored after actual battles with real strategies revolving around them. You have to give a lot of credit to the devs for showing their passion for history by tying operations closely to real life missions that happened in the past. If you're a fan of World War II, you will appreciate the dedication to the storytelling here. Another positive I saw was the game's art style, mainly in the music, map design, and story direction. Spectre of Communism had met expectations of being a World War II based game. What I mean by this is they gave you the vibe of being a general of this era through putting you into the shoes of a military official of this time period. I believe this is one of the best aspects of the game. The music for each battle matches the feeling of one of those historical documentaries with stoic tracks that make your actions feel epic. The sound design of the different units also excels and mirrors that of the classic vehicles and weapons of the era. The various maps were also impressive due to the design and how close they were to the actual operation. They had gone through many types of terrain and layouts which give the player many ways to combat a situation which gives the game a much needed boost in giving the player an open space to work. The story direction is pretty straightforward but they introduced many real-life characters and situations that gave more meaning to the missions rather than just eliminate your opponents like most other strategy games follow. And with the good, we have to talk about the bad. This game unfortunately feels like the port of the PlayStation family of consoles had difficulty matching the level of the PC. Throughout my playthrough, anytime there were cutscenes between major characters, there were major issues with basic animations. At times, voice lines did not match the lit movement of generals, which can throw off the immersion and dampen a scene. Most animations felt awkward in this way, and it hurt the realism that was set in the gameplay and art style. In the PC port of the game, they did a much better job with these animations, but it felt that the port of this game to consoles had major issues that were too difficult not to notice. As I mentioned in the previous review of the Strategic Mind games, this game would have done itself a favor by using historic images of these characters and focusing on the voice lines rather than using animations, mainly because you could have avoided having to use them which ended up hurting the experience. Along with the animations, I felt that the writing for the cutscenes needs a lot of work. At times I felt like the voice lines felt awkward and at times cringy. There were often long pauses between lines which led to long monologues which caused the game to feel drawn out more than it should. This expansion did a better job with pacing its cutscenes compared to the Pacific, but it seems like they still fall into the same issues as seen in the previous expansions. Roughly the first cutscene hits you with around 10 minutes of dialogue in the first section which is way too long to get you into the combat. Most positive of the game come from the closeness to historical accuracy, but based on the voice acting you would think that you are following American General. Most of the voice acting had jumped from multiple different accents from American to British back to American. It felt like some of the dialogue could have been adjusted to at least work in Russian accents to reflect the characters that we were working with. The cutscenes of this game should have been kept to a minimum to allow us to get right to the gameplay 
which was a strong suit of the game. One of the biggest issues I had with the title were the glitches that hurt my experience. At several moments in the playthrough, there were times where I tried to attack several units, but each time I tried, the game would automatically push my cursor into one of the corners preventing me from engaging. It did get frustrating at times, especially trying to complete major operations that take longer to complete. This seems to be getting a fix in the possible day one patch, but in my playthrough, it was a problem that was hard to look past. Overall, Strategic Mind Spectre Communism has both positives and negatives. The gameplay seems to be the biggest positive due to the fluid movement, various units, and many ways to combat enemies. The ability to upgrade units based on your playstyle really creates multiple ways to play, which makes the game feel fun. The attention to detail and bringing accurate vehicles and maps was great to see, and the epic soundtrack amplified the experience. However, the negatives seem to outweigh the positive. There are too many instances where the cutscenes felt way too drawn out and bland. The gameplay has to be the strongest aspect of the game, but we are taking too much time watching somewhat broken animations rather than playing the game itself. On the PlayStation port of the game, it seems that there are some bugs that dampen the gameplay, which is disappointing due to the fact that it's one of its best components. I'm giving this game a 5 out of 10. Strategic Mind Spectre Communism has potential to be a good strategy game based on its fluidity of its gameplay. However, the pacing, broken animations, and glitches hurt the overall experience of the PlayStation port of the title. My hope is that with updates, this port will be better in the future, but for the time being, there are a lot of things that need to be fixed upon its release. Thank you everyone for watching. If you haven't done so yet, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. You can join us on Twitch where we stream at least two to three days a week, and you can find that in the description below. Join us on all of our socials also located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming, signing off. Peace out, guys.